Hello everyone, my name is Hal, and this is Quail Studios Guitar. Thanks for coming along. Today we have something very special for you. Also at the end, towards the end, we're going to talk about a hangout. You can come and join me, whether you've ever given me any money or not, whether you're... It uh, doesn't matter where you are in the world. Now I got uh, a message from someone in Australia not too long ago, and he said, when are your live streams? And unfortunately... Uh, they happen for him at 1 in the morning because they're 16 hours ahead of us. Maybe I'll do a hangout some other time for him, for those people in Australia. Okay, um, at a different time. Today we're going to talk about smooth and balanced sound on guitar, and part of this has to do with, uh, it has to do with... with... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> voice leading. That's what I'm trying to say. So voice leading is very important. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what is voice leading? I've never heard of it before. If you've never studied uh, hymns and uh, the way they used to put vocal music together hundreds of years ago, uh, voice leading basically came from voices, the idea of voices and how they move towards one another. I was looking on the internet not too long ago and I saw a video by Anton McCaud. I've, I'm going to have to pull up his his uh, picture and his name so I can see how to say it. But he was talking about voice leading. And voice leading to me is very important because it depends on how the chords move back and forth. Uh, let me let me share with you something that he was doing. All right, I'm going to switch and let you watch a little bit of a video. I think that's it. Antoine, 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 Macaud. I'm not sure how to say it exactly, but this is his page. That's what it looks like, and. He was talking about, let's see, i got to click on something here. There we go. Here is part of his video, and let's just listen to part of it, and we'll see what he says here. Let me move over to where it starts. Okay, here it goes. So let's say that I have a chord progression where I cannot use open chords. Let's say that I have B flat major, G minor, E flat, and C minor. So the first thing that you can do is play them like this, B flat, G minor, uh, E flat, and C minor. So there you go. He's talking about, here, let me just, uh, there we go. He's talking about these chords, B flat, G minor, E flat, and C minor. And you can play them as bar chords. I'm going to show you in just a little bit how you can play them not as bar chords. You don't have to use bar chords, but you can use a different technique. But basically what he's talking about is voice leading in this video, and it's called Don't Play Your Major Chords This Way, Play Them Like This Instead. And he talks about how taking that B flat chord and playing it like this, okay, and taking that G minor chord and going ahead and playing it that way, and the E flat, instead of playing it like this, playing it like this, and then instead of the C minor like this, playing it like this. And he talks about what voice leading is. Now let's look at the tablature and the music to these particular chords the way he did it. Okay, I've got to pick up. I've got to go back to my... There we go. All right, so I put it in B flat because this is basically in B flat. The first chord right there, let me put my cursor around it. This is that B flat chord on the sixth fret. And that's the tablature. Let's see, the next one right there is uh, the G minor. The next one right here, putting my 
cursor around it is the E flat chord. And uh, he's got that right there. And then the last one over here is the, what did I say it was? The C minor chord. Yes. Just like that. So here at the top you get the what we call standard notation. These are all the notes notated out there, 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 there. This one is the B flat chord. This one here is your G minor. This is your E flat chord and this is your C minor chord. And it's in the key signature of B flat. All right, let's take that away. Actually, let's move on. Now here's another section. He talks about using, instead of using uh, those particular chords, using them in a little bit different way. And here it goes. So if I want to do my entire B flat, G minor, E flat, and C minor chord progression, I could play it like this. Then I can play my regular G minor bar chord. Then E flat, like this, and then C minor. Once again, it's super smooth on all voices. If I focus on the top note. Okay, so he talks about super smooth on all voices. Let me take that away. There we go. He talks about doing it like this instead of like this. Right? So let's look at, let me go back to my chart here. And I'm going to bring up what he just did in tablature. Now, what was on the screen, those uh, chords on the screen, let's go back to here and let me pull up the chords here. Right there, these chords, B flat, G minor, E flat, and C minor. Now let's go forward, and these are, this is the tablature for those chord boxes that he actually put. Here's the B flat, the G minor, the E flat, and the C minor, and that's how he's playing it. Okay, that's fine. Um, for some of you, that may be a little difficult. Let's see, and I'm going to tab out here. This is exactly what he was playing. You'll notice that that second chord right here actually has two notes missing. Instead of six notes in the chord, like it has here, he actually didn't play the high E string and he didn't play the A string when he played that uh, with the finger picking that he did. So he actually played this. Your B flat chord here, your G minor, E flat, and the C minor. Now let's look at this just a little bit. This is a, a good way to play it. It sounds really good. Um, let's go back to right here and look at these chords. This is how he played it at the beginning with all bar chords. See these three notes right here? They're on lines. I know maybe you don't read music, maybe you do, but we're just going to look at this really quick and I'm going to show you what's happening here. The reason he's talking about this concept, these three notes that are stacked up on lines they go down to these three notes that are stacked up on the lines just below it. And then they go up to these three notes that are stacked on what we call spaces. And then they go down two notes. And so you see the three, three here, three there, three there, and three there. And you'll notice that they go down, up, down, just like that. And that's what we call parallel motion. Now these two notes here on the bottom these are per perfect fifths in this chord. They go down to these two notes, and then they go up to those two notes, and then they go down to those two notes. This is all what we call parallel motion. Now let's go back over to this, and we'll show you what he's doing here. You'll notice that this note here on the top, when you play this chord in this uh, positioning, this top note goes over to that note. It's on the same line. 
and then this note goes up one note to the space note and then uh, stays on the same space. The second note here stays on the line, stays on the line, goes up one note. This note goes up one note from the space to the line. You'll notice that it goes over to the line there and that line there. Now this is what we call smooth voice leading. Now here are the bass notes. The bass notes go from B flat, this one here, down to G, up to E flat, and then down to C. And we'll go ahead and keep those notes just the way they are. But you'll notice that all the other notes, they're not jumping, they're just moving by step. Now let's talk about what you can do to make this even simpler. Yeah, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You'll notice that right here, hold on. I think I need to move my mouse over closer. You'll notice that when he plays this, hold on just a second. I need to turn this on again so you can see it. Oh, you know what? I don't think you saw exactly what I was looking at a second ago. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. All right, let's do this again. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you the smooth chord progression. You know, that was that was unfortunate. Okay. Let's go back here. I think I forgot to turn on the uh you were looking at my face instead of at what I was looking at on the screen. All right, let's look at this one more time. Sorry about that, guys. All right, I might have to edit this and re repost it so it's a little more not confusing. Here's the bass note. Sixth fret, B flat, going down to G, going up to E flat. Where's my E flat? There it is. Going down to C. All right, now these notes right here, this is what we call smooth voice leading. From that D note right there, when we play this chord, oops, there it is. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> That's that note right there. That note you're listening to. It goes over to the next chord like that and goes, you can hear that and then it goes up to the E flat and then it stays on the E flat for the last chord and then this note stays on the same note stays on the same note goes up to the next note this note which is an F goes up one note to a G stays on the G stays on the G so this is what we call very smooth voice leading it's just so smooth and so nice. All right, let's go back to, you know what, I have this now. Look at these tabs right here. I'm gonna show you how to play the same notes exactly in a little bit different way. All right, let me take that off the screen. All right, so instead of playing it like this, you can actually play the same chord and just play the first, the, the low four strings. Okay, like that. Stick with me because it's gonna get even easier. And then the next chord, okay, you've got your G minor chord and I'm playing, here, let me put this down so you can see better. So this first chord, what I was doing as I was playing these low strings, just like that. And then I went down to my G minor and played the low E string, right? It's the same thing as this. So except when we play these four notes, you just play the four strings, then you go down to here, and then on this, it looks like a barred C. See that? 
that. It's that C chord right there. You can actually play the same notes. It's the E flat chord. That's actually the best way to play it. And then you can play, instead of playing like this, you can play like this. Right? So you can actually play the same notes. Oops, wrong chord. Like this. Or you can play it his way. And then here. Now, if you'll notice what I just did when I played this, okay, I've got this finger on the third fret. I've got this bar finger on the third fret. I've got this finger still on the third fret. And when I do this chord, I've still got my bar finger on the third fret. Right? Guess what you can do? <coughs> you can actually, oops, that's not a capo. You can take a capo like this. This is my capo. It's a shub capo. I love it because it, it just snaps on like that. It's very easy to adjust. Put a very light touch on it and I can do the chords like this. Now what do those chords look like? It looks like a G, right? Now let's look at some chords here. These are the chords that I'm actually using. Okay, now some people play their G like that, right? I don't usually play my G like that. I usually play it, actually I play it like, like this without that second finger, which is exactly what we're playing there. So what he was doing, he was using his pinky here and his, his first finger, his fourth finger and his first finger to do a bar like that. But now I'm just doing that same chord progression with the G like that, using an E minor chord, but I'm just using my low E string, my fourth, my third, and my second finger. You can actually, you can actually just use one finger, but I like to mute that string or cover it, just like an E minor chord. But I'm not playing the high E string, and I'm not playing the A string. And then you can use a C chord, because that's exactly what he was playing, but kind of in a barred position. And then you can use an A minor. Okay, so the chords are G. Here, let's. Chords are G, E minor, C, A minor. capo on the third fret, but the real chords are B flat, G minor, E flat, C minor. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's look at, let me see what else I've got here. Oh yes, let me put the tab for that on the screen for you so you can see it right there. The, the, these are these chords tabbed out. So what you do is you put the capo on the third fret and you play this. It's like a G chord. That's what it looks like in, in uh, standard notation. You'll notice that the voice leading is exactly the same as what he was doing if you compare it to the other one. Alright, and then there's your E minor chord, there's your C chord, and there's your A minor chord. You'll notice that I'm not playing the A string or the E string on that G chord. On the E minor, I'm not playing the A string or the E string. On the E flat, excuse me, on the C chord, which is actually an E flat chord, I'm not playing the high E string or the low E string. And on the A minor chord, I'm not playing the high E string or the low E string. So that's the way you play it. Now, this right here, 
How close does that sound to this? It's the same chord. B flat, and this is a B flat with a capo. It's exactly the same notes. Here, let, let me. So you can see my face. So, right there, exactly the same notes. What's the difference? Well, the strings are a little shorter and they sound a little different. The timbre is a little different. So there might be a reason to use this position instead of that position, or if you're not using the capo, like that. Right? You know what? I need to check. Hello, who's here? I haven't, you know, I've been doing this the whole time and I haven't checked to see who's here. We got Bob here, we got Lisa. Hello, Lisa. We've got Scott. Lawn's mode, I'm ready for some. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go mow my lawn today, too, Scott. Robert is here. Good morning, Robert. Fuser, Tamas. Hello. Don't know where you're from. Be glad to know. John Lennon played his E flat that way. Yes, John Lennon did play his E flat this way. That's right. You can play E flat like this. You can play it like this. You can play it like this. Wait, wait, that's an E. You can play it like that. You can play it like this, right? Play E flats many different ways. Okay. <laughs> so what am I talking about? Well, yeah, the reason we might not play this is because we might not want this sound. It might be a little too dark. Right? With the capo, it's exactly the same. E, G minor. Of course, if you put your finger on it like this, right, it's going to virtually sounds the same to me. What do you think? There's the E flat, A minor, oh, excuse me, that's a C chord, looks like a C, to that C minor. Here's the C minor up here. Same notes. You can hear, though, if you're using headphones especially, that these, these notes sound a little darker. See, that one sounds a little brighter, especially that note right there. Hear the difference? It's a different string. It's a little bit thicker here, and it's a little longer here to here with a smaller string. Right? So those are the differences. Now you might be thinking to yourself, are you serious? Are you serious that like guitar players and composers and things actually think in detail about these things? Yes, <laughs> I'm serious. And I think about this when I do a um, an arrangement. And the faster you are at doing this, um, the more experience that you have in it and the faster you are, then the more music you can write or arrange or that kind of thing and really get a good sound. So I think about these things, you know, you, you know that uh, one video that I have that's actually very popular, it's got a million, I don't know how many videos it has, 1.2 million or something, I haven't checked it for quite a while. It's the, oops. Right? It's the uh, Snow by Red Hot Chili Peppers. And um, John Frusciante plays it like this. Something like this. Right? And when I heard it, I thought to myself, that sounds like, sounds like open position chords using a capo. But what he's doing, he was doing the same thing that Antoine was talking about. He was using these chords, you know, like a, an E minor chord to a C to a G to a D let's see looks like a D right kind of like that but he was doing it with all bars and so on my video of snow what I did was I actually put a capo on it and I'll tell you some people tell me you know you can't do it that way but you know what so many beginning guitar players can play snow let me do it without a pick. Right? 
right? They can do it without a pick. I'm, no, I mean, without a cape, uh, excuse me, what am I saying? They can do it without barring the chords because now they're using open position chords. E minor, C, G, D, and that one right there. Right, it's more like that one. Right, it's a little bit tricky and some people have trouble with that and they have to study it, but come to decide that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high on. Right? So it's a really, really good way when you're using uh, flat chords or something or have to do a lot of bar chords to learn how to do or play with the capo and get exactly the same sound. Exact, well, I don't know. Sometimes people argue that you, know, you don't get exactly the same sound because it, your fingers have a different sound than a capo does, and I agree with that. It's pretty close. All right, thank you for being here. And today, now, I usually hang out with my supporters, and I have a secret. Maybe it's not secret. I only tell my supporters, the people that give me money and support me financially, um, about my Hangout. But today, in the description, is a link to the Hangout, and it's different. So those of you that normally come uh, to my Hangout, check it out. It's in the description. I also updated it on my other pages. I put the wrong link yesterday or this morning, and so I updated that. Make sure you have the correct link today. It's only good for today. It's not good for any other time. And I'm going to do a hangout. And if anybody like Robert wants to come, well, Robert, you know my, you know me anyway. Scott, if you'd like to come along. Lisa, if you'd like to come along. Uh, let's see, uh, Hooser, if you want to come, or anybody else that's out there that wants to come along and hang out with us, you're welcome to that today and today only. Might do it again someday, but uh, this is the first time I've ever done this. I opened it up to everyone that's at the live stream. All right. There you go. I'm going to take off, and we're going to hang out for a while. I've got another lesson in an hour, so we won't be there for too long. But take care. We'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.